Raising the debt ceiling was a circus. Uh, what it really is is a symptom of an illness, uh, which is a society outspending its means. Uh, traditionally, when that circumstance has happened uh, and the debasement of the currency continues, the currencies do poorly and gold does well. This is Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for June 6th through June 13th, 2023, while supplies last. This week we feature the 2023 quarter ounce Noah's Ark silver coins at $3.25 over melt per coin, and Ital Preziosi 10 ounce silver bars at just $3.49 over spot per ounce. Minted by the famed Geiger Mint in Germany, the quarter ounce Noah's Ark silver coins are sovereign coins of Armenia, with a face value of 100 dram, and a great way to get fractional silver for a significantly lower premium than you would normally pay. Next, our Ital Preziosi 10 ounce silver bars not only maintain a great level of liquidity, but also boast one of our lowest premiums in several months, at $3.49 over spot per ounce. They come individually numbered, are available in any quantity, and come 50 to a box. Our specials this week are IRA eligible. And if you'd like to learn more about a precious metals IRA, call us, and we'll be happy to help you in that process. To order our specials or any of the many other options we have available, call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. We're always privileged to have this distinguished returning guest, Rick Rule, formerly the CEO of Sprott Asset Management, now the CEO of Rule Investment Media, joins us this Monday, June 5th, 2023. Rick, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Always a pleasure, Dunnigan. I enjoy these conversations and I enjoy my interaction with your audience. So thank you for facilitating that. Well, you cast a long shadow here. People are aware of your decades and decades long career, uh, both in speculating and investing your uh, close friendship with Doug Casey and others that that bring kind of a, a wide uh, scope of experience to how they should consider, how they should, how they should think about the financial world in which we live and how they should think about real things such as uh, commodities and natural resources in particular when it comes to their investing lives. Um, that's something we'd like to talk a little bit about because people have been it's been in our face every day and every week for the past, well, forever, but especially the past month about the, the theoretical debt ceiling. Now it's been completely removed. Now they're going to spend as much as they want for the next year and a half, which I, I was just talking to Andy Sheckman. I said, I think that's the most honest thing they've said in the last couple of decades is that's, that's been what they've been doing, but now they're just admitting it. Um, you talked to us several times in the past about criteria that you use to evaluate uh, whether precious metals are a good asset to be holding at the time. And one of the things you've talked about is debts and deficits and negative real interest rates. Can you give us a bit of a refresher on why you watch those among other factors that you maybe remind us about as well to decide when is the right time to be holding precious metals as part of your financial strategy? Uh, I will, but first of all, I'll vent about this debt ceiling. It amazes me that uh, everybody pays attention to the debt ceiling and nobody pays too much attention to the debt. Uh, will we resolve this political issue between Tweedledum and Tweedledummer? Um, interchangeable from my point of view. And, and nobody really focuses on the debt. Uh, I, I don't think that the debt ceiling is an issue. Although I do note, Dunnigan, that if uh, you bumped up uh, in your own budget uh, against a debt ceiling that was employed, uh, uh, applied to you by creditors or something like that, you couldn't merely call up the bank or the credit card company and say, raise my debt ceiling. Uh, it is only people whose wills uh, are backed up by the force of arms and the force of law that can engage in that sort of thoroughgoing fraud that we've engaged in. It's the debt that's important, folks, not the debt ceiling. So after that, once that's off my chest, I feel better already. Let's talk about uh, why things like that are relevant to the gold price. In my experience, and further, through reading a lot of history, uh, I've come to the conclusion that gold does well when people are concerned about the maintenance of their purchasing power in the currency of the realm. Uh, to the extent that people feel confident, they don't need to own much gold. To the extent that they don't feel confident, they need to own some gold. 
So let's look at some of the factors that might cause people to want or not want to own gold. Uh, or put conversely, let's talk about our currency and the factors that influence it. I think the debt and deficits are important. Uh, on a current basis, on balance sheet, we owe about $32 trillion. Net of $7 trillion of the Fed's own balance sheet, largely through counterfeiting, I mean quantitative easing. Uh, and that's a concern. Uh, more concerning is $100 trillion in off-balance sheet liabilities. The net present value of Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, that kind of thing. In other words, largely benefits to old folks like me. If you compare those two numbers, combine those two numbers, pardon me, $120 trillion in liabilities at the federal level, not including state and local level, that gives you some concern. It gives you concern particularly because this year's operating deficit at the federal level will likely be $2 trillion, meaning that rather than servicing that debt, <laughs> we'll be increasing it. That debt was less of a problem when we had artificially low interest rates, but the interest rate is higher, which means that increasingly servicing the debt will begin to crowd out other uses uh, of taxation. A problem indeed. Now, to the extent that they spend money that they can't borrow, of course, they print it. They call it quantitative easing. Uh, I, I note very recently that they, quote, solved the banking crisis by putting $200 billion in the United States banking industry. I note, too, that so far they haven't borrowed it. It's pretty clear that they didn't do it from retained earnings because they didn't have any. So they had to conjure it up. They had to print it. They had to quantitatively ease it. Dunnigan, if you printed up a bunch of stuff called Dunnigans, they'd put you in jail for counterfeiting. When they do it, uh, seemingly it makes them very popular. But whether or not it's popular, it is true that the creation of a bunch of specious new currency units do not make old currency units more scarce and more valuable. So that would cause somebody to be concerned. Uh, concerned. But the most obviously concerning is negative real interest rates. On the U.S. 10-year treasury, the government purports to pay you, and they will, 4.4%, I think it is right now, 440 basis points, in a currency that, depending on who you believe, is the Congressional Budget Office would suggest losing its purchasing power at about 7% per annum compounded. In other words, if you lend the money to the federal government for 10 years, they will cost you 3% of your savings a year, every year for 10 years. My friend Jim Grant calls that return-free risk. Should somebody be concerned about their U.S. dollar savings? Well, if they're concerned about debt and deficits, if they're concerned about counterfeiting, and if they're concerned about negative real interest rates, the answer to that is yes. Raising the debt ceiling was a circus. Uh, what it really is is a symptom of an illness, uh, which is a society outspending its means. Uh, traditionally, when that circumstance has happened uh, and the debasement of the currency continues, the currencies do poorly and gold does well. What really makes me interested in all this, Dunnigan, uh, is that this, this string, this spring is being coiled very tightly. I've pointed out in your show before that precious metals and precious metals related assets comprise less than one half of 1% of the total savings and investment assets in the United States, down from a, th a four decade, pardon me, mean of 2%. It's my belief that concern over negative real interest rates, quantitative easing, and debt and deficits will be such that precious metals and precious metals related assets will at least revert to mean. If that's true, demand for that asset class will increase fourfold, which is precisely what I think is going to occur. In such an environment, uh, have we been through that before? Do we know how that ends up affecting uh, nominal prices of those assets and those asset classes because it's always difficult to understand for ordinary people how with increased uh, demand and restricted supply how the pricing can have remained kind of 
in some cases, not for gold, gold's at nominal highs, but but for silver uh, and perhaps some of the equities sort of languishing uh, in nominal terms. Uh, but again, those those trade on the margin. And so when this massive awakening happens that you're describing, have we seen that before and how does that play out? How has it played out in the past? Three comments there. The first is uh, that by any stretch of the imagination, the last 40 years have been extremely benign. Interest rates have been able to fall. We had uh, some of the benefits of the so-called end of the Cold War, although it appears to be raising its ugly head now. But suffice it to say, over the last 40 years, there hasn't been a lot to be concerned about. There was a period of U.S. dollar weakness uh, coinciding with uh, strong negative real interest rates uh, beginning about 1999. And I note that the gold price did fairly well in the period 2000 to 2011. Uh, going up from a a $250 price uh, up to $1,900. But the real market that I think is the analog for this next market is the market that took place in the 1970s. Now, in fairness, uh, that gold bull market took place from a price controlled uh, beginning. The price had been set by Roosevelt at $35 an ounce, maintained at $35 an ounce for a very, very, very long time. But the consequence of that price control and further the consequence of the government's guns and butter policy, uh, which is to say they're fighting the war on poverty, which, of course, they lost and the war in Vietnam that they lost, too. Uh, (laughs) We had a circumstance where, in addition to negative real interest rates, uh, we had overwhelming debts, which we have now. It's important to note that we entered into that 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 period, uh, the 1970s, with artificially low interest rates. The price of gold ran from an admittedly price controlled $35 an ounce to a high of $850 an ounce in 11 short years. The back of the inflation expectations uh, was, of course, broken uh, by the Volcker, uh, uh, you know, uh, management of the Fed, which raised the prime interest rate, if my memory serves me well, from five and a half percent to 17 percent. The difficulty with regards to repeating a, quote, Volcker in this circumstance was that debt at that point in time, federal debt as a percentage of GDP was about 22 percent. Federal debt as a percentage of uh, GDP today is more like 110 percent. And the off balance sheet liabilities that we face today are much, much, much larger. In addition, of course, to the debt burdens that state and local governments enjoy, if that's the right phrase. So the ability to deal with the debasement of the currency by raising interest rates is compromised by the cost that that would have to society because of the much larger debt burden relative to GDP that faces today. I truly believe, although I can't tell you what happened tomorrow or the next day, that there's going to be a reckoning. Uh, and, and that reckoning will be hard, hard particularly on long-term debt instruments, which is to say long bonds, uh, and good, uh, I suspect, for traditional inflation hedges like gold. You've got an upcoming uh, seminar. Actually, it's a conference and you have had it annually for, you'll tell us how many years, the Rural Investment Symposium on Natural Resource Investing and in Boca Raton, Florida, again this year. I was pleased to meet you there last year and to uh, meet many, many uh, other speakers and uh, company representatives, etc. and a lot of the attendees. Uh, there were several, several social gatherings that were quite uh, enjoyable for mingling with uh, other attendees. Can you tell us what's people can expect this year and why they should seriously consider attending. Dunnigan, a couple hundred uh, serial attendees, people who've come to the conference every year for 20 or 25 years, tell me that this is the high point uh, of their financial education process for the entire year. We've been doing the conference for a very, very long time. And the reason that people should attend, first of all, is to be in the company of like-minded people. There will be four or 500 high net worth, successful investors. It's a wonderful place, not just to get information from the dais, but rather also to get information from each other. It's also just nice to be in a crowd of people that are interested in what you're interested in, uh, who you enjoy hanging out with. And as you suggest, we give you lots of uh, opportunity to hang out. Sponsored breakfast, sponsored lunch, 
uh, a, a joint cocktail hour. Most importantly, I think the attendee cruise, uh, where we take as many people as want to come on a boat cruise uh, on the intercoastal canal in Florida in the evening when it's merely warm as opposed to hot. But I'm not going to charge you money to meet each other. That's not what I'm going to do. Uh, traditionally, the conference has been a success because of several things. One, we give you access to big picture thinkers, but the type that you don't get from CNBC or NBC. James Rickards, uh, you know, CIA director, uh, lawyer to Wall Street, including long-term capital management, that takes you into the belly of the beast to see how the beast really, truly operates. Nomi Prins from the Fed, who can certainly talk about the Fed uh, or Wall Street. Bill Bonner, uh, Grant Williams, but in addition to these gurus, these big picture thinkers, when you come to be exposed to that worldview, uh, we introduce you to wonderful portfolio managers and analysts, people who've analyzed natural resource-based businesses for half a century, uh, people who didn't learn four or five days ago how to spell gold or spell oil. Uh, this is to say people who are veterans of the industry. More importantly than that, every year, we gather four or five or six uh, of what we call the living legends, entrepreneurs who have built multi-billion dollar natural resource companies from scratch. It's important to hear their stories, to hear them talk to you about what they learned during the process of building these multi-billion dollar companies, companies that have gone from, in some cases, 10 cents a share to 50 or $60 a share. It's important to learn from their mistakes and from their successes, how you can identify future living legends who we will introduce you to at the conference uh, and how you can avoid making the mistakes that they made and, and profit from the lessons that they learned. We've learned from our attendees that our exhibitors are content too. At most conferences, exhibitors are regarded as advertisers and the qualification to be an exhibitor at most conferences uh, is a pulse and a check that cashes in reverse order of importance. At our conference, every public company exhibitor is owned uh, in the conference sponsors' own portfolios. Now, sadly, Dunnigan, there's no guarantee that just because I own a stock, it goes up. But there is a guarantee that I'll know the companies well enough that I've invested my own time and treasure in them. And as a guarantee of that, with regards to this symposium, our boot camps, and any other educational product that's uh, offered up by Rural Investment Media, it comes with a 100% money back guarantee. If you don't feel for any reason that you didn't get your money's worth, email me, no questions asked. Well, I might ask you a few questions, but you don't have to answer them. Uh, you'll get your money back. Uh, I think this is this form of commitment to attendees is what's made the conference such a success over the last three decades. Well, folks, if you want to make sure that you get signed up right away, look in the in the description of this video. You'll find a link. You can just click on that link. It'll take you right to the sign up page and you can get registered. It'll also help our channel as well. And uh, Rick, we appreciate always your visits here with us. Uh, our, a lot of our viewers also say in addition to the information they gain, they gain a better vocabulary as well. So <laughs> you're teaching us in multiple dimensions. Doug, and I need to say one other thing. We have a room block at the Boca Resort Hotel. You were there last year. You know it's an absolutely five-star resort. Michael Dell has $1.4 billion in counting invested in it. If you reserve a room there during high season, it costs you somewhere between $1,100 and $1,500 a room. Depending on the room that you book this time, it'll cost you $290. But the room block is going very, very, very fast. If you want to take advantage of that extraordinary discount, uh, you need to act fairly quickly. I'm not one of these guys that say it absolutely positively has to be done yesterday. But the truth is, uh, if you want to pay attention to the early bird pricing of the conference, and more importantly, if you want to lock in a very high quality room at an absurdly low price, uh, there is, in fact, the requirement of timeliness now. Excellent. So people hop to it. 
description of this video link register and uh, be able to meet Rick in person at the conference. I know Andy Schechtman, uh, CEO of Miles Franklin will be there. Many of the other guests that you may have seen on our channel uh, who are CEOs of gold mining companies or royalty companies will also be there. So it's going to be a great time to uh, see and meet and talk to and pick the brains of these people whom you've got the, gotten introduced to by watching our channel and others whom you haven't met yet. So Rick, thanks for making that available. I know it takes a a ton of work on your part and on uh, Albert's part, everyone's part, so to make this happen. So thank you for doing it. And folks, as always, thank you for joining us on Liberty and Finance. Rick, always appreciate your presence here with us. And Donegan, once again, any of your uh, listeners who want to continue the conversation about natural resources are invited to go to ruleinvestmentmedia.com. There you can list your natural resource stocks. Please no crypto. Please no pot stocks. Please no tech stocks. List your natural resource stocks, I'll rank them one to 10, one being best, 10 being worst. And I'll also comment on individual issues where I think my comments might have value. If you're an accredited investor and would like to uh, participate in the private placements that I participate in, I will give you notice of it for free, right? Placements. Uh, this is an absolutely free service. I'm not telling you to buy them. I'm not telling you not to buy them. I'm just telling you what I do. So once again, rule investment media, rankings, placements, but most importantly, if you think that you might want to attend what I believe is the best in-person natural resource conference on the planet, uh, be sure to come to Boca Raton. If you can't come, but you want access to the, con to the content, we're going to live stream it this year so that our audience around the world or our audience who just feels it's inconvenient to come to Boca Raton can view the proceedings from the comfort of their own home. Note that both uh, uh, physical attendees and live stream attendees will be able to access all of the archives of the conference for the balance of 2023. I noticed myself, despite the fact that I put on the conference myself, uh, 48 hours in four days is more than anybody can get all of. And I have myself revisited the tapes of the 2022 conference four times now. So that's a wonderful opportunity to learn and relearn all of the information that'll be available to you, either in person or live stream. I thank you for adding that, Rick. I meant to ask you about that, as I usually do, but you caught it, so thank you. And uh, making those all free, uh, uh, available, the, the rankings, the, pre the placements, and you didn't mention, should they ask about bank if they're interested in Battle Bank? Uh, if, I, absolutely. If people are, are less than happy uh, with their current banking relationships, if they think there's something wrong with not being paid interest on their accounts, if in particular they're Miles Franklin uh, customers and they want to borrow money uh, against their physical gold and silver holdings, or simply if they want to be involved in a sanity-based bank, uh, I would urge them, if they go to rural investment media, to include the comment bank. Uh, and we will put them on the list of people who will be informed uh, about the opening of Battle Bank, a, a new sanity-based bank. Well, there's plenty of that missing in our current era as you help us to uh, see more clearly each time we have you here. We look forward to our next visit. Rick, thanks for joining us on Liberty and Finance. Always a pleasure, Dunnigan. Thank you. Say hi to your family. I look forward to seeing as many of them as you can bring to Boca. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we can let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days you will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. 
The package will be boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Kaiser, my brother Elijah, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.